Hello, friends, and welcome back to the new episode of r slash I don't work here, lady. And our first story. Yes, I'm working. Yes, I work here. No, I don't work for here. But before we start, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. I hope this applies. If not, just pull me. My job is a veritable gold mine of this. Short version is I help disabled people keep their jobs. Most people realize this quickly, so they either ask someone else or ask my client. Sometimes they respond a bit less well. I will be being very vague as to my location to protect my job and sensitive information. So I'm in a movie theater and my client takes tickets. They are capable and fully understand their job. However, basically everything hit the fan this shift. And that's why I'm there, to help them deal with problems they're ready for. Specifically, a natural disaster. This delays all the movies, some by 45 minutes to an hour. My client is standing behind the podium in uniform. I'm in khaki shorts and an Overwatch tee. A man in a Captain America shirt approaches us and attempts to hand me his ticket. No problem. I point him to client. This happens a lot. I'll be me. Client will be C. Customer will be Cap. Me, pointing to C. Cap attempts to hand me ticket again. Me, I'm sorry, I can't take your ticket. I don't work here. Cap, well, why are you behind the podium? Me, I'm not, C is. Cap, you're standing next to C, so are you supposed to help them? While technically this is true, I do not directly do people's jobs, and this client needed help in a different way, so I'm not saying yes. Me, nope. C, can I take your ticket, please? Cap, finally. C. I'm sorry, sir. Your movie has been delayed by... Looks at me. Looks at ticket. 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Cap, upon hearing me know that apparently lost vocal control and eventually sputtered out to me, I, I, I want to see your manager. Me. Okay, but you'll have to go three towns over and wait a week. They both don't work here. And they're on vacation. C. He doesn't work here, sir. Cap finally stops and just pulls a... Huh. Okay. And our second story. The day I got fired. Walmart is an amazing place, isn't it? That seems to be the case. As a day ago, I found myself in a very peculiar situation. I was poking around an aisle looking for some baby wipes, diapers, the usual, but I was soon approached by a gangly, gaunt-looking fellow with a yellow shirt that said store work. What the F are you doing? He asked me. So he looks at me. I look at him. We share a tender, non-verbal moment. What the F are you doing? He asks again. At this point, I was sitting there, tic-tac idling in my mouth, trying to figure out why Skinny Pete was accosting my taste in Pampers. What? I finally managed to ask. Why aren't you at the registers? Here's where I will admit I was at fault. I actually did kind of look like an employee without a vest. After a brief moment, I sputter out a meek but to the point, I'm getting baby wipes? Oh, you're getting baby wipes, is that right? You know who else gets baby wipes? Customers. Register, go. Again, we stare a 30 second or so exchange of me looking to him, then the basket in my hand, then at my shoes, and back to him. I don't think, I don't care what you think. You shouldn't care what you think. He got really close to me now. I could smell the disapproving pain in his eyes as he spoke in a guttural whisper. Listen, a-hole, maybe you're new to this, but the Christmas season, you know, the time when we have a crap ton of customers pouring in to buy crappy plastic toys for their sticky little germ fiends? Yeah, that's happening right now. And you're sitting here effing around with your GD baby wipes when we have three open registers Maybe you haven't considered this, but other people work here too, and it isn't their job to pander fake smiles to fat old ladies and fat old men in blue scooters full of peppermint sticks and Christmas effing cheer. So get to the register! I had to get home. If I'd had more time, I like to think that I would have let him on a bit, since I'm a bad person, but I had to make dinner. I don't work here, name on the nameplate. His eyes shot out of his head like cannonballs. His Little lip whiskers stood on end, and he turned inside out before he yelled at me, You're effing right, you don't, because you're fired. Take your effing baby wipes and get out. Thanks for nothing, a-hole. He stormed off, shoving a diaper bag onto the floor. Out of view, I heard a hasty, 
Oh, crap. F. Oh, F me, as he rushed off. In all honesty, I kind of feel bad for the guy. I can totally imagine he'd been having a terrible past couple of days in a terribly undermanned store, and he finally just snapped. He was admirably articulate angry, and the little tinge of the regretful realization as he wandered off into the hellish void of stock shelves makes me feel sad for him. So I lost my job I never knew I had. There go the employee benefits. But hey, at least I got free baby wipes out of the ordeal. And our next story. You look like you're 16. What makes you think you know anything about beer? So this happened about a year and a half ago when I was a bartender at a high-end restaurant. This isn't all verbatim, but the exchange is as good as I can remember it. I'd been working at this place for over a year and had worked my place up to shift supervisor, bar manager. I was 19. One day I was set up at the bar drinking with one of our regulars and a few colleagues that had the afternoon off and a man came up to the bar to order. There was only one bartender working as it was just after the Sunday lunch rush and it was always quiet by that point. This bartender was new and I just handed the shift over to him. He was capable of running a shift on his own but hadn't quite learned the drink menu. The gent had just walked in to order and started asking about the beers in a really snobbish manner, such as, what are your wheat beers? Which lager is the most crisp? And do you have any real hoppy lagers? Basically, he was asking questions about any type of beer possible just to be complicated and sound like he knew his stuff. No one really comes in asking those types of questions if they don't have a specific flavor profile in mind. You only typically ask about wheat beers if you want a weedy beer. And you only ask about crisp beers if you want a refreshing lager, and only ask about hoppy lagers if you're into IPAs. Anyway, I overheard this and offered my own guidance as the poor new recruit was looking at me like a deer in the headlights. I just ran through the menu and suggested the correct drinks for his questions, to which he just exhaled through his nose and right out said, You're about 16 and shouldn't even be drinking here. What makes you think you know about beers? I'm a polite person, and I'm really not a fan of unnecessary conflict, so I didn't offer any wisecracks or smugness. I just told him, I heard you asking some pretty tough questions, and new recruit's name just started last week. I thought I'd help out as I'm off shift, and it's a good training point for him as I'm his manager. To which he joked about the new starter being old enough to be my dad. I'm not sure what he was trying to gain from throwing weak insults at a stranger, but my mind switched into work mode and I just started listing off drinks on our menu like I was advertising half the breweries in Europe. I asked what flavor profiles he was after. He said he wanted a light ale or a heavy lager, high ABV or low. If he was looking to eat, then perhaps one of the wines would be better suited if a heavy beer is preferred, the special was fish. I finished off with the new bartender's name. Can you pop staff discount on for this gent? It'd be nice to see him back here when I'm working. Proceeded to give him my till and walk him through the steps to apply it. Lo and behold, this bloke orders a pint of Carling because all the fancy beers were way too expensive. Imagine that, trying to show off to a bartender that you know more than them and then ordering the cheapest beer on tap. I don't miss these types of guests one bit. And our next story. Poor parking garage behavior preps prospective employee for poor performance evaluation. I used to work for a large state agency and after five years had become a middle manager. My office was in the state office tower downtown and parking was scarce, but middle management and up got reserved parking in the garage attached to our building. This was a great perk since it's a cold state and on days that the tower garage is full, you have to park at a private garage about a mile away and walk. One day I had to run a few errands and pulled up to the garage a little later than usual. By the time I'd gotten there, the sign on the garage said it was full, but I had a badge that let me go in anyway and drive down to my reserve spot. There was a man at the gate who was trying to get in despite the sign that said it was full. When I realized he didn't have a badge, I backed up a little bit and honked my horn to let him know he could back up. This infuriates him. He gets out of his car, flips me off, hurls a few choice words my way. As he backs up out of the spot, I pull up to the gate and he yells some more words my way about how stupid I am and that I can't read that the garage is full. I ignore him and assume he's just some guy there to have a meeting at one of the dozen or so agencies in our building and I park my car. I get to my desk and get an email from HR that one of the upper managers was sick and that I needed to cover down on some interviews. 
Interviews in our agency start with a group of prospective employees working on a small project together, and then the candidates sit in front of a panel individually. I walk into the room where all the candidates are sitting, and there I see him. Parking jerk. I was in my car, so he didn't get a great look at me, but I knew exactly who it was. The candidates introduce themselves and get to work on their small project. Parking jerk was trying to control the entire process, but they successfully completed the project as a team. The panel then asks all the candidates to go sit in the hall while we discuss and would call them in individually when we were ready. Once they were all out of the room, I giddily told my coworkers about my interaction with parking jerk and they die laughing. We call him in first and begin asking him basic employment questions. He's otherwise a strong candidate, but was very full of himself. The rest of the panel goes first. Finally, it's my turn. Me. How do you react to stress? PJ. I handle it just fine. I'm a very level-headed person. Me. Come on, everyone gets a little flustered at some point. PJ. Not me. Cool as a cucumber. So you never do anything like get out of your car and yell at a stranger? Silence from PJ. Or call them names and tell them to learn how to effing read? The blood drains from his face. Do you realize this job puts you in front of the media frequently and someone is always watching? Do you realize that if you were to work here, your actions would reflect not just on you, but they would reflect on your director, the department as a whole, and state government? Do you think that if you were in my position, you would hire someone who behaved as rudely as you did? He hung his head in shame. I think I may not be cut out for this position. This doesn't necessarily mean you're a bad person, but you may not be ready for this job. He was deflated. I think that this was really the first time someone had held him accountable for his actions. He didn't get that job, but a few years later, I saw him working for another agency, and by all accounts, it sounds like he'd learned his lesson. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.